What's up YouTube? My name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. Today is a very good day, because today is Saturday, and that means I can start on this. I've been itching to do this all week. I really, really have. Um, loads of people have commented and tipped in as well. Oh, I have one of them. Well, I've still got one. They're blinding. You're going to love this. I'm sure I will. Um, I just need to get it back together again first. So, uh, you can't really tell, but I have had a clear up because <laughs> I've been doing hangers. So the fabrication table has all been, you know, cleaned off. It's all been wiped down and, you know, all that sort of stuff. Same sort of thing over here, but I would rather do most of the work on that just because it's cleaner. And we're cocking about of engines. Um, this has got years of grime and grinding dust and crap and smooth and smut and snots and all sorts of other stuff in it. So if I can avoid using this, happy days. Um, I've got loads of bits. You'll see them as we get to them. I haven't got all my bits, but I've got some and I've got enough to start on, on, on this engine. So I've got a base gasket. I think the, what, the, what the plan is, first of all, I just want to clean the bugger because it's filthy. It does need a proper good clean. Um, but I can't do that. I can't get a pressure washer or all that sort of stuff until um, the engine's back together because there's just big holes everywhere and it all needs sealing up. So we're going to stick all the engine back together. Then I can give it a clean and then we can go to town on it. That's the plan. Um, I've got some stuff. I haven't got everything. I've got a crankcase cover gasket. I've got a base gasket, head gasket. I've got valve stem seals. You know stuff like that i've got some uh lithium molly grease which i'm guessing we're just going to eat jamie said get some i'm assuming we're just going to use that as an assembly loop um but i'm guessing um so there's there's plenty that we could be getting on with he's already done loads of donkey work like the the piston rings were shot so he's got new ones they've all been gapped and they're on the pistons ready to go so you know it's basically a case of cleaning up sticking stuff on and button the engine up basically um but i need his help to do it because i've never done an engine rebuild i've done bits and pieces you know i can do like valve clearances and change clutches and all that sort of stuff but i've never split cases asbo was going to be my first one um and that was going to be quite the learning curve so this is a bit of a gentle introduction to it really because i'm just sticking it all back together again um but you know, some guidance from Jamie is going to go a long way and he can set me straight and show me what to do and then I'll just carry on and get it done. That's the plan anyway. But he shouldn't be long. He's now, what, quarter to 11? I'm hoping he ain't going to be long. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get started. Right, let's, um, I'll get some bits out, that'll do. Right, so Jamie's in the house. <laughs> this is this is the bit where we've got to do full disclosure just in case we do something stupid. So Jamie is a control panels engineer, I want to say. Self-employed now. Yeah. Got your own thing going, which is kind of cool. Um, He's not a mechanic either, but he's been cocking about with engines for how many years? About 15 or something stupid. So you may well find that we do some stuff that the mechanics in the crowd are gonna go, oh my God, what are you doing? <laughs> Which, you know, could happen, I don't know. But he's never had an engine let go that didn't have a turbo on it. <laughs> Which you're sort of asking for it then anyway, if I'm honest. Um, so all we're doing to start off with is cleaning everything. So this is probably going to be a bit of a time lapse whilst we drink coffee, shoot the breeze, and get covered in... Listen to ACPC. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Oh, we need to stick him back on again. Yeah. <laughs> you can't have beer in ACDC, it's coffee in ACDC. Coffee in ACDC, right. I've tried that, um, I've been trying that non-alcoholic beer. What? It's horrible. Well, it would be, there's no booze in it. <laughs> So, with this bike then, 
when, when you got it, what's, what, what's, give us a lowdown on it. So it was, it had... So, the guy, I decided that I needed another project. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to work out how to tell the missus. Yeah, well, <laughs> so I had, I had five bikes in the garage already. <laughs> um, however, the Turbo Blackbird was being sold. Right. And I've decided I had enough room for another one. Okay. Um, and it. the Turbo was almost done. He's a nutter, that bloke. He revs the bejesus out. Of it. it should be dead already, and it just ends. The he turbo it. was almost done. Yeah. And I decided I was that the 1200? Yeah. I brought it here once, didn't I? No. Did I not? No. Yeah. Um, well, that was almost done. That was going to be my summer ride. Yeah. And I decided I needed something else. Um, the chicks haven't really been touched in a long time. I wasn't going to be, yeah. because I've cleaned it and taken it back to stock and decided I was going to keep that as an investment. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, I just needed another bike and I found this on eBay down in Cornwall and I did, and I didn't really want to pay more than about 500 quid for it, but right. it came up. Sorry, mate. I got it for a little bit more than that. Um, when I went to get it, the bloke that I bought it from was, um, he was terminally ill. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, he said he hadn't been on a bike for a long time. He said that he bought this about 20 years ago and it just sat there and he had great intentions for it and he'd had the frame painted, replaced a load of bolts and things. Yeah. Um, he did get it painted that orange sparkly. <laughs> was that him, was it? 90s disco colour. <laughs> Tart sandbag. Yeah. Well, like I said, I grew up in Essex and all the cars were painted like that at one point. <laughs> Every, every man and their dog had a course of that car. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he um, he said, oh, I've got a workshop out the back. It's in there. Right. So I went into this workshop. You know what, an EN, I think it's an EN 500? Kawasaki? An old mm. Kawasaki? It was a, they were Damn. parallel twins. Oh, right. Whatever it, they might have been 350s. But anyway, they're getting quite rare. He had about 50 of them on racked shelving in, in this workshop. He built this workshop, it's a big wooden shed kind of thing. Yeah. But it was an L shape, so you walk in and you've got all these bikes and all these engines. And then you turn left and he's got a couple of old hospital beds that he's turned into motorcycle bikes. <laughs> he had a hoist, a proper hoist. Right. Um, running across the top of the, the back. But it's absolutely huge. But yeah, he had about 50 engines in there. I asked him, what are they? I th I'm sure they were like, you said EM 350s or EM 500s. Right. Somebody will know. Um, but uh, he said they're really rare, he said, and they can't get hold of them in America. Because I've got all of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, that was his, um, because like I say, he was terminally ill. He was uh, leaving them to his missus because he reckoned he had about 100 grand on the shelf. Oh, yeah. In engines, so... But his intention was to build this at one point, and yeah. he just never got to do it. Um, so he, he had it for, what, he... He's had it for about, I think he's he had it 20, like 20 years, years or something. So was it on the road in that time, or was it a project for him? He said he'd never had it on the road. So it hadn't done anything in 20 years, and then he sold it to you. Yeah, and I didn't do anything with it other than strip it, strip it down. So how long have you had it? That would have been... February 2021, last year. So, so then turned a wheel in anger in 21 years is what we're saying. Okay. And then whatever before that. Yeah. It's done 60,000 miles. Not recently it ain't. <laughs> we're going to get it all back together again. You go, no, actually the gearbox is knackered. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, second gear on this will still outrun most stuff. That's very true, actually. Um, I'd say as well, once we've got all that bit together, just so we don't pull too much apart at once. Yeah. And we've got all that bit together, before we bolt all the clutch plate up, we'll have the plates out and soak them in oil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to do that anyway, so just, yeah. Because if, if it, it's, it's all been open there. and stuff, it's like, yeah, yeah. It's just been sat there for a while. Right, so, we're doing loads of cleaning. <laughs> the barrels are actually coming up really, really nice. Yeah. Really nice. Um, and the game plan is we're going to get the pistons in, and the barrels on, base gasket, all that sort of stuff. We can start cleaning up the head. However, 
we do have a copper brush crisis. Right, we ain't got any. So, some of this, I need to wait for them to turn up. But, what Jamie's saying, we're gonna have the fuel pump out the way in the filter just so we get a bit more space. Probably the manifold for the cooling system as well. Just so we've got a little bit more space. You've got to clean all this mating surface up here. Trying very hard not to get anything dropping down the holes. And he came up with something which I didn't even think of. We're going to put the middle pistons on first. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Because <laughs> I would have just started at one end and just carried on going. Which you could do if you think about it, because yeah, it only comes out one side. But apparently it's just because if you put the outside ones on, it's really hard to get the get the gudgeon <laughs> pins in the remaining pistons. Yeah. Depends which side you take them out. Well, yeah. It's just so anyway, think. we just need to try and make sure that nothing goes down here, basically, don't we? What's yeah. that? That dead spiders and stuff. Probably. moment the truth you're perched up on top of the bike you shouldn't fall over because you're cable tied but apparently this is going to be the interesting bit <laughs> yeah. right so you want this Come on. Right, here's that. So we're tying back up again. Um, I just went through that rubber pipe. Alright, oh, that'll do. Seems to hold it. I'm having a barbecue tonight. Yeah. Yeah. Monster burgers. He don't need to be dead tight, does he? Just, just hold it up out of the way. That'll do. That'll do. Right. Right. So if you take the weight of that end. Aye. And I'll take the weight of this end. So, we've got to lock the crank. <laughs> Stop Which, that turning. Yeah, hopefully it's sort work. of done. So the middle ones are at their highest point. Yeah. Yeah. This is the tough bit. This is we're going to have to try and get your ring compressors. Your compressor rings. With just a little bit showing. At the top, tiny bit. And get your fires. <laughs> it's tough on hand, isn't it? Oh, don't be on. <laughs> See, it's all droopy now. <laughs> right. Oh. So. It's annoying, isn't it? Yeah. So that's why I like the ones that lock off, but there you go. Right, so mine are in. Oh, yeah. You just want to see how I fed mine just into the bottom. If I lift the barrels up, we might have a bit more room to work with. Right. So I've probably got the right. weight of the barrels there. Yeah, I just want to get this on. Oh, these are a stupid design. Yeah. Why'd I get these? Rotate them towards the ceiling, that's it. You're not in the hole as on, no. on the bottom ones. But hey. Oh, it's sort of there. Right. Right, hang on. So you want to feed it just into the bottom of the barrel. Barrel needs to go up. There we go. Okay. Looks to me like the barrel's twisted. It needs to go up that way. That's it. So, you happy with yours? Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> this is going to be tricky because you want to put pressure on the pliers but not too much so that you can slide them down. All right? So I'm going to give the top a little tap and hopefully they're going to slide down. All right, go on then. Right. I don't really 
skeptical about that. It's, it's going to work. It's going. Is it? Stop. Make sure we're not doing anything silly. Oh, see, I've slipped off my uh, compressor. Mini compressor. Okay. Mind you, I've still got the top of it, so that should be alright. Is it going down? Not anymore. Uh, feels a bit. Yeah, your rings have popped out. Hey? Your, have a look here, your piston rings have popped out. Oh, bloody hell. Right, so we need to pull the barrels back off. So I don't want to tap down anymore in case we break a ring. So. Have you got the weight of the thing and I'll put yeah. the sleeve back on? Right, today's basically done and the barrels aren't on. Because <laughs> I cheaped out and got some really rubbishy tools. These things are junk. They really are junk. Firstly, that bit is not connected to this bit. And then with this sort of bike, there's two pistons up and two pistons down. So two have got to go in at a time. So you need a hand on each of these to squeeze the piston rings in. Then you need another hand to hold the barrels on. Hold the crank. And then you need an extra hand as well to hold the barrels, and then you need another hand to tap it down. I ain't got enough hands. <laughs> so, we have a cunning plan. Um, Jamie's got a better version of this. So, um, tomorrow is Mother's Day. <laughs> Our time is spoken for for an awful lot of the day. However, we are going to squeak out for an hour and get this done. Basically, if I can get the barrels on it, then everything's contained, and like Jamie was saying, like if anything did drop down there, you just blow it out with an airline. But I just, I would just want to try and get that bit sorted. So, we're going to be back tomorrow. Right, you're perched back up top again, just because it's the only place where we can put you. <laughs> um, well, we only need one, don't we? Right, where's the cutters? Um, So theory says this should be an awful lot easier. Hopefully we do it in one. Nice one then. Right, so if I grab the balls, you see on the bottom of these, this is what I was talking about. What's that? The leading. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a yeah, big yeah. bevel there. Great big chamfer. Yeah, yeah. Which will allow you to, to get the rings started. Right, so. So we've oiled these up as well. That did clean up lovely though, didn't it? Really nice. Right, okay, I think I'm ready. Tight or anything, is it? It's just got to be out of the way. Yeah, just feed that um, tension of bleeding as well. Yeah, we're in. Right, now have you got something to lock the crank? Uh, it's locked. Okay, so you take the weight of that end. Yeah, take the weight of this end. And you line your piston up with the ball. Uh, see, oh, that's that tension, it's that square. tensioner thing. You don't want to get it down and then realise the tension is not in there. Right, there you go, he's in. Yeah, your piston's lined up. Tension's free. Okay. Yeah, go on then. Alright. Oh, hang on. Right. If anything. I think the whole bore is twisted, so you need to square him back up. That's it. Ready? Yeah. The the this band is going up into that bevel. Yeah, yeah. It should be I think stopped. it might be a bit tight actually. It should be stopped by that. We're not hitting on it, are we? 
really. No, I don't think so. Okay, let's just see. Yeah, right, let's take that four. Oh, one of the pistons. Yeah, one of the piston rings. It's come out. That's all right. Well, no, it sort of knocked so it if down. You can rest that there. Yeah. We'll do this side. We'll swap it around so we do use the flared edge. Right, I think I'm all right. All right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So flipped them upside down to so the flared edge a bit top. Yeah. Right. So put that blade in. Yeah. Ring. Ooh. <laughs> be better but I just want to make sure that that flared edge doesn't go up inside again maybe no, it shouldn't how are you I'm all right yeah yeah good I just want to keep checking that no rings have popped out all right it's going it is going if you hear a click I heard one click. Yeah, that might have been my side. I don't know if you can investigate. Oh, it's still moving. It's looking good. I just need to keep checking both ends. Hold on the crank. Alright, all control ring is... So, the rule of thumb, when you see this band... Yeah go past the piston skirt, you know you're all the way in. Oh, I heard a click there. Then like that. Well, I can't see any rings. Well, the all control rings in. Yeah. You usually hear the difference in sound once it's all the way in, it goes a lot more hollow. Is it? Yeah. So, Good. Well, the rings is all definitely in. Yeah, right. So, can't go down too far because we've got to get the other one. <laughs> yeah. This is going to be the awkward one. However, oh, how no, much no. easier was that? So much easier, isn't it? Wasn't it? Right, right can you just check that blade, the, the tension blade, because there's that little. Um, little what? Uh, where the bolt goes through or the gallery or whatever it is, there's a lump in there on the inside of here. Yeah. Is he on the right side of it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah this tensioner comes in through there and he's just pushing on that, isn't it? Yeah, but it's sort of hitting that... Um, that there? Yeah. Pretty sure that's right. You've got to remember this is going to open right out with the cam sprocket. Oh, of so. course it is, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm going to have to take it back off again if it's wrong. <laughs> Um, right, I was just going to rotate that ever so slightly. Ah, just because the cam chain's caught not on the sprocket correctly. There we go. Right, just give yours a good solid whack. There we go. It's going down lovely now. So, right, a bit more on your side. That's it, you square. Tap him over. Uh, just make sure, hang on, hang on. Make Sorry. sure that your gasket on your side goes over that down. Just, yeah. Just want to pull that down over it so we don't break it. Yeah. Alright. <coughs> tap him over. Oh, get in! We're down. <laughs> How would you do that on your own? Uh, that has got to well, be the fiddliest yeah, bloody thing to, ever. So I tend to, where you've got your uh, breaker bar here, yeah. I tend to have a hole, like a bit of a jig with a hole in it. You put the end of the breaker bar in it so that can't go up or down. So yeah. I don't have to hold the tank. Um, also with the ring compressors. See those band, them. those ring compressor bands are actually quite big to get under, yeah. like that last one. Well, you say that because then you're sitting on top of a paper gasket, and you think you say that. Uh, but actually, once these are in, 
you lower the whole bore and bring the outside pistons up a bit. So then you've got more room to work with. So these will just slide yeah. in the ball. Right, so the barrels is actually down. It was a complete and total faff. <laughs> it's really awkward actually. I would imagine... How long does that take us? 20 minutes? I don't know, it seemed a lot longer. <laughs> But everything has got to be lined up. I mean, like, everything has got to be lined up. Because it's like a paper gasket, and then you've got a couple of dowels, so you don't want to be punching extra holes in it. And it's like trying to get both sides down together evenly with no rings popping out or anything else. It just really is ginger little taps, isn't it? It really, really is. It doesn't take a lot. If you've got to hit it with a hammer, then something's wrong. No, yeah, it's just like healing your hand, sort of just literally knocking it. But it's down. It's down. So what's the game plan now? We're gonna. I was just gonna take that cam chain off. So take that plate off. Yeah. And take the. Well, I'm pretty certain there's a, a, a key in there, so you can't put it on wrong anyway. But we could just mark it out with a bit of tip X. You want an impact gun? I haven't used that yet. You've got to hold the plate while you undo that Allen bolt. And I was looking for a 21 mil spanner, which I don't think you've got, have you? So you might want to just keep the yeah. pressure down on the balls so they don't pop up. So all we're doing here is just making sure that it's not catching. Can't hear any scratches. And it just rotates smoothly. Like that. Yeah? So if you want to come and feel that. It is poetry in motion, isn't it's it? Nice. I do like it. So just smooth. Oh, it's really smooth, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I suppose it would be. So all we're doing then is if we get well, either pick, pick any two, <coughs> get them right to the bottom. I'm bottom dead centre of two pistons. So, about a bit more. As soon as you see it, stop moving. There you go. That's it. And then we're just going to check these balls. Make sure there's no scratch marks. Because if there is, it means the ring, one of the rings has popped out of the groove and it's been pushed against the side of the ball. It's getting mashed again because there's buckle gap there. Yep. I think we're okay. But looks nice on those two. Do you want to check the middle two? I do. Oh, looks good there. Get on. Just your finger around it, I suppose, just to make sure. But... Yeah. So I'd leave just a little bit of oil in these anyway. Yeah. Right. Quick tidy. That's all about it. <laughs> right, so we have um everything's back on again. We have just had this um timing plate off. That is a timing plate, isn't it? Um and we've had the cam chain out, we turned it over by hand, checked all the balls to make sure there's no scoring and all that sort of stuff. So and we is all looking quite good. Um, we have put some oil down it just to, you know, keep it happy, so to speak. Um, because what we're going to do is that is basically going to be it for this weekend because both of us have got other commitments and whatnot. Um, but what we're going to do is Jamie's just going to show me cleaning up one of the valves and also just go over what needs to happen on the head, which we've got sat here. This is in a Bit of a two and it just needs a bloody good clean, really, doesn't it? Yeah. It really, really does. Um, so that's going to be my job during the week. I have got some brass brushes coming, excuse me, um, which is going to make things an awful lot easier. But that'll be the next bit. So hopefully next weekend it'll be head on, valves in, blah de blah de blah, cams, whatever. Cams and then we'll try, well, yeah, we'll check all the, the shims. Yeah. So they'll probably need a bit of adjustment. Oh, there's your doohickey there, look. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> but we're starting to get the engine buttoned up, which is lovely. And it's all going together nice and clean and stuff as well, which is awesome. We're basically calling it a day here. Um, we've got, essentially, all the balls is back on. It's all down. Nothing's bolted down. It's just sort of in situ. It's had oil squirted in various orifices and rubbed all over it and stuff. And then we've just... This is just pallet wrap. It's not like industrial cling film, basically. So that's all good. So that is basically where we're going to leave it today. 
Before he disappears though, he is going to go over what he wants me to do with the head. So we've got, um, what is there, uh, all the valves need cleaning up, don't they? Yeah. And there is one new one in there. Yeah. Um, he's just going to show me how he does it and then I'll just do that during the week. And then everything on the head, like all the mating surfaces and all that sort of stuff all needs cleaning up. Um, I've got some brass brushes coming. I've got a manual coming. Um, there isn't any point in getting any engine assembly lube we was chatting about because it's, yeah. it's going straight together and getting run and just, it's just, just getting oil all over it as it goes anyway, isn't it? Well, just yeah, just maybe midweek, just squirt a little bit more down the balls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that'll be all right. And then we is getting really, really close. So next weekend, Jamie's going to come back again. We're going to try and get the head on and get all that stuff sorted. Um, we've got the shims and all that other stuff. So the top end should get buttoned up. And next week as well, I should be getting the carb service kit. So I can shove all that lot through the ultrasonic and just do the basic service on and replace all the consumables. Yeah. And, and we're actually getting reasonably, probably like a couple of weeks, we should, we should be good, able to start it. It's a good goal to have, isn't it, for next week? I reckon. Just to have head on, cams in, time it up. Yeah. And then we'll do a shim check. Yeah. Because then... Yeah, because obviously we've got different, yeah. Pop down to, to GTs and swap them over. Yeah, 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 we'll get that done. But like you say, we need to know where we are. Yeah. Start off with, basically. So anyway, that's it. That's how we spent our weekend. <laughs> and a very good weekend it was too. I'm loving all this. But anyway, um, there will be some pictures and stuff come up. So you see what it was like before and what it's like now and all that sort of stuff. The difference is remarkable, I have to say. Like, and most of it is just cleaning the shiznick out of stuff. But, you know, if you're putting an engine back together again, why wouldn't you? But anyway, that's where we're leaving it for this one. Thank you very so much for watching. Do hope you're well and staying safe. We'll see you on the next one. Adios.